What's up, everybody? Gary here, GBL Iguanas. So we've got some uh, some fun stuff to handle today. Going to show you all how to treat wounds in reptiles. Uh, Ron and Tammy like escaping out of their cage into the basement and found Ron today. And I don't know if he you know might have gotten into it with Sully or if somehow he got caught on something. So I've already treated it because doing it with one hand's hard. You can kind of see in there. I mean, he got something got him him pretty good. I, I really wish I had some kind of an answer as to what happened. Right, that's enough blueberries, buddy. But yeah, but unfortunately injuries do happen, so it's very important to know what to do in case of that. Oh, I'm sorry, I was adjusting myself. They didn't mean to cover you. Gotta clean that screen too. So thankfully that's not, I mean, it's not a good wound, but it's not, I can see that it's not like this really deep, deep flesh wound. Um, that looks more like just like the, the outer skin got torn, like if you know we get a little cut on arm. So I just kind of wanted to go over, so when we have something like this, how we treat it and just different ways that you can go about it at home. Of course, if you're unsure about anything, always, always, always consult with a veterinarian. You can see he's perfectly okay. You know, he's acting normal. I've just been just feeding him a bunch of blueberries to help keep him in one spot. Cause he just, he's just, he cray cray. But yeah, so first and foremost, one thing you always wanna have in your arsenal is some uh, betadine or betadine, however you wanna say it, it's antiseptic. This stuff is really, really, really good for on the minor injuries. It's really, really good to help keep everything clean on it. Uh, so basically what I did with this boy is basically just took it and put some drops like at the top of the wound where it kind of dripped down. Um, if he was sitting still a little bit better, um, and I don't want to, didn't want to restrain him or anything. You could always go with like a paper towel, put a few drops on the paper towel and you can wipe it down that way. That's always step one. Cause you want to clean it up before you do anything to it. So we take our betadine. Like I said, we just put a few little drips in it. This is really good to use for, I mean, snakes and lizards. Um, if they have wounds on their body and you're giving them a soak, you can actually do a, a solution of this with their water that you're soaking them in. So while they soak, it actually helps to clean stuff out. Um, so Betadine, very, very good. You can buy it. Honestly, I bought this one off Amazon, but you can get it anywhere, you know, Walgreens, Walmart, whatever. Um, it's like 10 bucks for it, but definitely got to have this. Boy, what are you doing? Cray Cray. He's just a little good. So we moved him upstairs into the tent that Tammy was in. Um, so that way we can help quarantine and keep it clean. All this crap that's on the tile, it actually is clean. It's just stuff that's either caked on or stained. We did uh, clean and disinfect everything before we put him in there. Um, we use F10 cleaner for all of our sterilization stuff. So let's see if you can zoom in a little bit there. And you can kind of see it a little bit more there. I thought something was up. So when I went into Bindi and Sully's cage, I saw Ron and when he, normally he stands right up when I walk in and I could just tell it's something he was trying to stand up, but he kept putting himself back down. So after looking at it a little bit closer, uh, you know, obviously that wasn't very difficult to find, but found him like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thankfully, nothing major. Within a couple of weeks at most, that should be healed up and scabbed over and, and good as new. And then as he continues to shed out, it'll get better and better each time. So yeah, so that's that's our fun. We're dealing with Ron. But after we're done with the Betadine, Next thing you want to get, if I know where I'm keeping everything here, um, from what, oh gosh, what am I doing? From what I've been told, there's a cream called uh, sulfur sulfadiazine, which is like a burn cream, but it's very good for wounds, for cleaning and disinfecting, but it's prescription only and you can't get your gosh darn hands on it no matter how hard you try. Um, the next best alternative is like a neosporin cream, but just plain Jane neosporin. Um, I got the generic brand of it. Um, no pain relievers in it. You don't want any pain relievers, painkillers, nothing like that. Just straight, just Neosporin ointment. Um, and then what I do with this, I'll take a Q-tip, put a little dab of this right onto the Q-tip, and then just go to the wound and you just kind of like paint it on, essentially. Um, and that's gonna give you like a nice barrier over the wound that's gonna help. One, it's gonna help to kill germs and bacteria and whatnot, but it's also gonna help prevent anything from uh, getting in there. Why are you not focusing? And of course he's going behind there. Goodness gracious. But yeah, so this is step two. If what, there we go, I got it to focus finally. This is step two to put on. Um, so you don't need to like gob it on like crazy, but enough that it, it does actually cover up the wound openings. Um, just so that way again, you can make sure that everything stays nice and clean. And as a third step, what I like to do 
is Liquid Band-Aid. Um, I got the, the spray, because just to me that was just so easy. So once I'm done cleaning it, putting the ointment on to help keep it clean, and then I put um, just a quick little tss -tss -tss of uh, the liquid band-aid on there. And again, that's gonna help to keep everything clean and help kind of keep everything together, just like a, a band-aid would on your skin. Um, so I put a little bit of this on as well. So for the first couple of days or so, um, I'm doing this, you know, once a day. Um, after the first few days of it, if everything looks like it's starting to heal up nicely and we're not seeing any signs of infection or anything like that, then I'll start to cut that down. Um, of course, if anything does look like we're starting to get any signs of infection, at that point, he's going to get right to a vet so we can make sure he gets all the proper antibiotics. Um, thankfully, we know people that work at vets, so that's going to help out a lot. So yeah, so I mean, we'll definitely keep everybody updated on him as, uh, as time goes on. He is just, I can apologize, we just, stuff is messy everywhere because we're just redoing so much and moving so much around. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if there's any other, uh, you know, suggestions that y'all have, something that different than what we do, Ron, please leave it down in the comments below. Uh, Ron's going to be good as new soon enough, but I'm going to get him into this tent here and close it up so he stops exploring through all of our crap everywhere. He's already got some gunk on him. What are you doing, boy? So yeah, poor little booger. Boy, you had enough blueberries for the day. Alrighty guys, so just a quick little episode on uh, on how to care for minor wounds. And uh, so we'll keep y'all posted. Let us know if there's any questions we can help answer. So always thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see y'all uh, next time, hopefully with a good prognosis of Ron.